write all possible resonance structures. So here I am showing you three main resonance patterns that we are going to use to figure out the resonance for our molecules. And the first thing that you need to know is that the nitrogen here is missing a lone pair of electrons. Why is it missing electrons? That's because it wants to have an octet, it wants to have eight electrons, and right now it is bonded to two hydrogens and it is bonded to this carbon. So it has three bonds, which means it has six electrons because every bond has two electrons. But in order to have an octet, it needs two more. So that means two electrons were not shown here. Now, let's go ahead and see what kind of pattern we can recognize in our molecule. So the following patterns are here. Double bond next to a positive charge. We do not see a positive charge anywhere in our molecule, so that's not it. And the second pattern is double bond next to a lone pair of electrons. Well, we see a double bond, and it is, it is next to a lone pair of electrons. So that must be our pattern. Let's go ahead and highlight it. Here it is. And now we're going to go ahead and let me just make it a little thing, draw it out. So in this pattern, we will use two arrows to show the movement of electrons. First, electrons from the lone pair will move to create a double bond on this neighboring bond. And then there will be another error showing electrons from this double bond moving to create a lone pair on this adjacent carbon. So when we see a double bond next to a lone pair and we're trying to do a resonance, we will draw two, two arrows, two curved arrows, one from the lone pair to the single bond to create a double bond and another from the double bond to the carbon. Let's go ahead and see how that works. So I see a lone pair next to a double bond. I draw one arrow from the double bond to this bond that will create a double bond. Now this carbon, if, if I was done, this carbon would have too many bonds. It would have, it already has eight electrons. And if this arrow, if we're using this arrow is showing that these two electrons are becoming a double bond here. So then this carbon would have 10 electrons, which is impossible. Row two atoms, elements, should not have more than an octet, should not have more than eight. That's why a second arrow is needed. And what we're going to do is we're going to take some electrons from this carbon. So we're going to take electrons that were used in the double bond here and put them on this carbon. To, to and they will become um, a lone pair. For resonance structures, we draw a double-headed arrow. Let's go ahead and see what we have created. So my nitrogen that was attached to two hydrogens, let me just show it like this. It used its lone pair to create a double bond here. That's what this arrow is showing. And then this double bond is no longer there because it was used to put a lone pair on this carbon. So now I have a lone pair on this carbon. These two double bonds stayed untouched. This carbon was neutral, but now it, ha it gained electrons. So it's going to have a negative charge or you could just calculate the formal charge. The nitrogen here was neutral, but it shared its electrons, so it will have a positive charge. Notice that all of my resonance forms should have the same net charge. The net charge here is zero, and here plus one and minus one is zero. So, so far we're okay. For resonance, we do not know ahead of time how many resonance structures there are. Instead, you have to keep on going until you cannot go anymore. So I have to ask myself, could I keep on going? And I can look for patterns. I see that I have a lone pair of electrons again next to this double bond. So this is my next, my next pattern. Here I go. And again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the lone pair of electrons to make a double bond here and use this double bond to create a lone pair of electrons on this carbon. And let's see what I will create. This stayed the same. This did not change. This bond did not move either. Now here, this arrow is showing that I'm creating a double bond here. 
and this arrow is showing that I now have a lone pair of electrons here, negative charge. Can I keep on going? Yes, I can. Again, I have a lone pair next to a double bond. And a lot of times when you have a ring with a lot of double bonds, you will have many resonance, for, uh, many resonance structures. So let's go ahead. We go here. And then we use the double bond to create the lone pair. And let's see what we make. I have, again, the nitrogen is not changing. I didn't touch it. This double bond I did not touch, but here I use this lone pair of electrons to create a double bond to the left, and this double bond now becomes a lone pair of electrons. Can I keep on going? Yes, I can, because again, I have a double bond next to, next to a lone pair of electrons, so I can go this way and this way, and let's go ahead and see the product here. Now, this, this lone pair becomes the double bond to the right, and the electrons from the double bond with the nitrogen are giving a lone pair to the nitrogen. And here I am. Can I keep on going? So the lone pair, we could go this way and this way, but then you will realize that you are coming back to the structure that you have already drawn. And that means that we have created, we have shown all the resonance structures for this molecule. Now, let's go to the next molecule. In the next molecule, I do see a positive charge next to a double bond. So here, one of my major resonance patterns is a double bond next to a positive charge. And what we do here is we move the double bond over to create a double bond on the other side. So let's go ahead and highlight my resonance pattern here. And you can see that I use one way cur one curved arrow to show this resonance. Bring this double bond over to help this positively charged carbon. Let's go ahead and draw the double headed arrow and let's see what I create, what kind of resonance. So here I have double bond to the left. And now this carbon has a positive charge. Another thing that I forgot to show, but I should have, is just like in the first example, the nitrogen does not have one lone pair of electrons that it was not shown. So just be careful. Some books and some professors may show all the lone pairs and some may not. You just have to watch out for that. Can I keep on going with my resonance? I have a positive charge next to a lone pair of electrons, and that's my third resonance pattern, a lone pair next to a positive charge. This nitrogen can help this positive charge by sharing its electrons with it. Let's go ahead and show what we will create. So this was not charged. Now, NH2 here. No longer does it have the lone pair. Instead, it becomes a double bond. The positive, this carbon was missing a bond. That's why it was positively charged. It will now be neutral. The nitrogen is using its electrons to share with carbon. So it will now have a positive charge. And again, you can watch my video on how to calculate formal charges if this is not intuitive to you. Can I keep on going here? Well, not really, like I did not see any lone pairs. So I have drawn all the resonance forms for this molecule. And notice that again, the net charge of every resonance structure is equal, plus one, plus one, and plus one. That's another way you can check your resonance structures.